Think about all that he's done. Start counting my blessings one by one. I sure don't deserve all that he's done for me. But I'll praise him forever through eternity. And I am amazed that he'd take the time yep. to give yeah. me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so blessed. He's given me breath and he has given me life. Amen. He saved my lost soul from torment and strife. Jesus died on the cross just to show me his love. He's building my home yeah. in heaven above. And I am amazed that he'd take the time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so blessed. He's given me his word in this precious old book. Amen. It speaks to my heart every time that I look. He loves me and helps me when I'm tempted to sin. Through Christ my Lord over Satan I win. And I am amazed Amen. that he take the time. To give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so blessed. Amen. Amen. And we all are blessed. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Second Peter chapter number 1, verses number 5. I have read these verses and preached from these verses. Uh, so many times, so um, it sounds diff uh, uh, weird for me to say this. I'm, on, I'm really not preaching from the, uh, these verses, or I'm not going to preach verse by verse. I'm going to use this verse to help preach a su uh, subject message tonight, because when you read this right here, this, this right here is God's way for a, a person to be a complete Christian. The Bible said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Amen. You know, when we look at those things, it says, add to your faith virtue, virtue knowledge, knowledge, temper, temperance, patience, patience, God of this, God of brother kindness, brother kindness, charity. These things ought to be in our lives. And, uh, you know, I, I think that we fail uh, a lot of times at these uh, particular subjects that are mentioned here. But if we have these things, we'll be complete. Uh, he says, therefore, if these things be in you and abound. Yeah. Now, a lot of times we have these things in us and they don't abound in our life. In other words, uh, they don't show like they should. They're not, uh, they don't come first in our lives like they should. And uh, it says, they make you that you neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then it said, those that lack these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Yeah. And I've forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Now, I mean, you know, you think about that. I don't really believe uh, uh, that a person can forget that they've ever been saved. Amen. I don't think that's what it's uh, saying. I think it uh, means here that a person can live uh, like they've forgotten that they've been saved. Right. Amen. It makes it look like uh, to the world that they've not been saved. I would tell you, being a complete Christian is a difficult thing. I know we're complete in Christ. I'm not trying to say that God doesn't do a whole work. But I'm saying in front of the world, as the light of this world, we need to be a bright, shining light. You agree with me? Say amen. 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 Don't look at me like a calf looking at a new gate when I was preaching this morning. I'm telling you tonight, listen, we want to be complete Christians. We want to be complete. That way the people can look at us and they can tell exactly what we are as soon as they look amen. at us. Amen. 
And so, uh, listen, and listen, uh, and, it, and it don't make that, what's the situation? It don't make the no difference about the circumstance. It don't make the conditions. Listen, we ought to always be the same. Listen, when you're trying to live for God, uh, listen, when you're straying, when you're struggling, when you're sinking, when you're suffering, when you're sad, when you're spent, when you're searching, when you're seeking, when you're serving, when you're shipwrecked, shunned, sick, slack, slandered, smitten, uh, sorrowful, or scared. Amen. That's enough S words, ain't it? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just, I went to the uh, concordance and, uh, and looked at all those different, that just describes our life, amen. Right. That's what we deal with every day. And, uh, and no matter uh, that we do, uh, no, uh, we don't use, need to use that as an excuse. Well, I, I was overwhelmed. I was this, I was that. I had a bad day. Everybody does, amen. amen. Uh, listen, we need, to, uh, we need to be complete Christians. I'm going to give you seven things real quickly, and uh, we'll be out of here in about 15 minutes. I'm telling you tonight, listen, to be a complete Christian, you must, number one, you, and, and I want to say this, it might not be in the exact uh, uh, order that God would have them to be in, but we're going to come back and we're going to, uh, I believe, make the, uh, the last one the first one, amen. And number one, I want to say tonight, listen, a person uh, that wants to be a complete Christian needs to situate themselves in the sanctuary. Amen. I mean, uh, you know, when you think about that word situate, that means a fixed position. We, we uh, you know, uh, we ought to be just like uh, the window here. That window's not going to go anywhere. Right. Every time we come, that window's going to be there. That's the way all of us ought to be. Amen. amen. Say amen. amen right there. Listen, hey, uh, some look at uh, church as an obstacle. Right. I mean, it just gets in their way for some reason. I don't understand that. Listen, some look at church as an option. Yeah. Come on now, right. say amen. amen. Some look at church as an obligation. Right. Now, we're getting toward the right kind of crowd. Uh, we sometimes, well, we always look at church as an obligation, but that's not why we go. We look at church as an opportunity. Amen. It's an opportunity for us to worship the Lord. It's an opportunity for us to gather together to fellowship. Amen. And I'm telling you, that is needed in the day and hour that we live. Amen. And so, listen, we need to say, uh, situate ourselves. You know, the uh, scripture is good as I do. In Hebrews chapter 10 and in verse number 25, the, I, I used it this morning. I used it again tonight, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together, as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Amen. In the day and hour we live in, we need to be here more and more and more and more than we used to be. Yeah, amen. But people are are here less and less and less and less than they used to be. That's right, preacher. You know why? They're busy out making money. They're busy out having fun. There's a lady at the restaurant the other week at Ken and Mary's. I didn't get any conversation with her. But I said uh, something about Sunday. And she said, Sunday, fun day. That's the problem. And that, that's the problem in America. And your average church Sunday is fun day. Yeah. Amen. Now I want to say, listen here. We need to situate ourselves in this in the sanctuary. Amen. I'm going to preach a couple of these real quick. Then we'll bear down on a few of them. Uh, situate yourself in the sanctuary. I believe that most of y'all are faithful on Sunday night. Listen, number two, we need to separate ourselves from sin. Right. I want to remind you of that. Amen. The Bible says over there in 2 Timothy, in chapter number 2 and verse number 19, uh, and, and, and in 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse 19, it says, uh, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. You want to be a complete Christian, you're going to have to depart from sin. You have to depart from iniquity. Listen, go, I, listen, we studied this verse not long ago on Wednesday night. 1 Thessalonians in 5.22, it said abstain from all appearance yeah. of evil. Amen. Now, I know, I know your family and some of your friends and some of your co-workers is going to say you, you, you're judging. You're judging. You say it's just like when you go to a stop sign. I'm judging. I'm making a judgment on whether I need to go or not. Do I have enough time or not? Is anybody coming or not? Amen. But all a judgment is is a decision. That's right. Amen. And so uh, you need to situate yourself in the sanctuary. You need to separate yourself from sin. Number three, you need to surround yourself with saints. Amen. I didn't say church members. I said saints. Amen. 
Can I say that one more time? Yeah. Listen, I'm going to tell you, when my kids was little, and these kids that we're raising now, I don't let them go home with just anybody. Amen. Just because somebody come to church, I didn't let my kids go home with them. You say, why is that? Because I went home with people my daddy would let me go home with. <laughs> yeah. I went home with a deacon's kid. Yeah, I told y'all about that one one time. It had one of them little... Had one of the little magazines that you boys ain't supposed to look in under the deacon's uh, truck seat. No, no. I'm just telling you, we need to surround ourselves with the saints. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, at verse number 20. Hold on, I'll be there. You ain't got to turn there. You can just listen. Amen. If you want to turn there, you'll probably beat me there. 13, 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Amen. I remember reading that as a teenager. I, well, I say that. I remember hearing that, I believe, at camp being preached. And, and the preacher that was preaching was trying to warn us boys, as young boys and young ladies, not to hang around the wrong crowd. Right, Same way for grown-ups. Don't hang around the wrong crowd. Yeah, One reason is because when others see you do that, they're going to think you're doing what they're doing. Amen. I'm just saying the truth. Amen. So you situate yourself in the sanctuary. You separate yourself from sin. You surround yourself with saints. Yeah. Amen. People that love the Lord. Not people that backbite. Not people that run people down. Amen. Not people that are not faithful. Not people that are yeah. sinful that go to church. Yeah. No. Amen. Amen. You're, not, you're never going to be any better than the ones you hang out with. Right. Number four, saturate yourself. And I want to just kind of stay here if I can for a little bit. Saturate yourself with Scripture. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I was raised in a, in a Bennett Baptist preacher's home. And I knew all the doctrines. But I didn't know all the Scriptures to back the doctrines. I knew what I was supposed to believe. Yeah. But I couldn't quote you the verse or I couldn't give you a reference to a verse because I didn't stay in the Bible like I should have when I was a young man but I'm going to tell you what the Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that need not be ashamed you ever had anybody to ask you a simple question about the Bible and that, that scripture would not come to your mind yeah. or you couldn't think right yeah. and you felt ashamed yeah. I have hey, amen so did to show thyself, what does it say? Approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I will be honest with you, now you've heard me say this, and I will, still say, I will continue to say this. When somebody asks you a question, you can't answer it biblically, you say, I get back with you. Yeah. Don't just try to be smart and just give them some stuff. You see. Saturating yourself with the scripture. Well, the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yeah. So you stay in the word. And, and, and it seems like that maybe one of y'all posted that verse not long ago. Maybe I, maybe, a, maybe maybe somebody else, I can't remember that posted that verse. But I mean, that's a good verse. Yeah. Because we, we get in the word, and I'm going to tell you what, it's been said before. This Bible will keep you from sin, and sin will keep you from this Bible. That's right. Amen. That's a good statement. Amen. Amen. You can't you can't live in sin reading this Bible. It's gonna get you somewhere or another. Right. It'll get you. And so we we just need to you know I, I think sometimes we we know we know just enough to get by. Right. Now you say preacher that ain't right. That people shouldn't do that. Most most church members do that. That's what most church people do. They do they did like I did when I was in school. I was there to play ball and try to get some girl's phone number. That's the only reason I was there. Had no other reason to be in there. I'm serious. I didn't like school. I didn't want to be at school. I wouldn't have went to school. My mom and dad had made me go to school. I'm just telling you. That's the attitude I had. And the attitude I had is if I pass, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. I wish that I worked in the class as hard as I did on the field. I really did. It wouldn't have took me so long to learn how to read. I learned how to read. When I mean read, I've told you this before, I did not I didn't know anything about reading comprehension. 
I, I didn't, I, I didn't, you, I, you know them tests you used to take? You would fill in them little dots, you know? It'd take me so long to read the paragraph, then go back and say, what was that again? And read the paragraph, the buzzer was going off, and it was time to put your pencil down, amen. I'm just telling you. I couldn't read, and I couldn't comprehend. I didn't know before I started reading, I was supposed to look for who, what, when, and where. Yeah. When you read your Bible, look for that. That's why so many people get so, uh, they, they take this verse and want to apply it over here. Yeah. you got to keep Scripture in context. That's right. you got to think about what, who he's talking to, who's talking. Yeah. What time is it? Amen. What place is it? Hey, Amen. Yeah. And I learned that in Bible college. Telling you. Amen. And, and I still had to read things two or three times to get it. You know, somebody like Cody Zorn, he can read a book. He can read this book right here by Marcy Aiken. And then 10 years from now, he can tell y'all about it. Right. I can read that book in 10 minutes from now, I can't tell y'all about it. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Some people got this uh, like a photographic memory. It's amazing. But I'm telling you, listen, if we, if we stay in the Word, you know, I, I used to think to my, when I was younger, my dad, he, he, no, he, he'd quote them scripture, he'd quote them scripture, he'd quote them scripture, he'd quote them scripture, and he'd quote them scripture. You know, you know how he did that? By saturating himself with the word. My dad had a New Testament, a little skinny New Testament. I told you this before. And he put it in his wallet, and he kept it like that right there. You see, he didn't have no phone like we got. When we go to the bathroom, go to the restroom, go to break, Daddy would take that out of his wallet and he would read a, as much as he could whatever time he had a lot. Amen. We got, we got technology. All we got to do is hit, hit a few a little apps, click, click, click. But we're there. Yeah. Read, read, read. Let it read to us. So simple, so simple. I mean, right at our fingertips. We need to saturate. Listen, let me get, let me, you know how Brother David Epps learned to quote all them Bible scriptures? He didn't write, he, he, uh, uh, uh he, he didn't uh, listen. He didn't ride. Uh, he, he didn't ride down the road. Listen to Ray Stevens. Ray Stevens singing boogity boogity. <laughs> the street. Y'all know that song. <laughs> no, I mean, and, and, and most of Ray Stevens' songs are pretty good. But uh, you know, but he didn't waste his time doing that. You see, he wrote. He ride down the road, listening to CDs. Of the word of God. Yeah. Not what some man would say was exactly what the word of God said. Amen. And he would go over and over and over and over and over. That's what we need to do. Amen. Folks, I'm telling you so, preacher, I'm 80 years old. Preacher, I'm 8 years old. You need to read your Bible. Amen. Are you listening to me, Presley? Listen to me, Paisley? Vernon? Brianna? You read tomorrow? Tomorrow might read to you. Can't take it. Hey, that Bible is very important. It's very important. We need to listen. I'm you, it'll change our. You, you, you see, here's the thing: the power of the Word of God is what saved us, yeah. and it can change our lives too. Yeah. It can change tomorrow if we allow it to. Yes, amen. I like these men. They send me. I, I, I make jokes about it, waking me up, but it's fine. You know, they start their day with the Word of God. Yeah. We all ought to start our day. With the word of God. We don't saturate ourselves with scripture. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Psalm 119, verse 9. Amen. We need to situate yourself in the sanctuary. We need to separate ourselves from sin. We need to surround ourselves with saints. We need to saturate ourselves with scripture. Amen. Number five, we need to season ourselves with supplication. I was saying a while ago. The scripture that I read there, I said I was reading tonight, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, said, I exhort thee therefore, or I exhort therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercessions, and givings of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life and all godless honesty. Hmm. We're supposed to pray for everybody. Amen. Pray for everything, about anything. And then we're supposed to give thanks at every day. That's right. Amen. How about that? I, I believe we need to. We need to. We need to. Uh, we need to have a little bit more. We need to extend our prayer life just a little bit. 
beyond our house, beyond our family, beyond our friends, beyond our co-workers. We need to pray for our local leaders, our state leaders, yes. our government uh, there, uh, and uh, our, our, our federal leaders. We need to pray for all. Amen. Amen. I, I mean, that probably is the number one reason our country is in the shape it's in. I mean, I believe Christians stop praying for their country yeah. and stop standing for what's right. Yeah. Amen. Stop speaking out for what's right. Amen. I believe that's been the demise of our country. And so we need to season ourselves. I almost did this tonight. I almost had prayer meeting on tonight. What I mean by that is just everybody find themselves a place to pray and pray for about 15 or 20 minutes. Let me ask you something. Brother Bill Gettlesberger used to pray for one hour every day before he went to meet the Lord. Has anybody here ever prayed an hour at one time? I have now. But I, <laughs> I repeated all y'all's names about 17 times. I about ran out of stuff to say. I mean, you know, I'm thinking, let me pause here a little bit and let the Lord talk to me or speak to me. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Because prayer, listen, what do you think is going to help you the most? You telling him something or listening for him to tell you something? See, prayer is a two-way. Prayer is a conversation with the Lord. It's not just you talking, Amen. but it's him talking back. <laughs> Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You see that Bible you got in there? He can talk back to you through it. Yeah. You see, you have the you, you, you have the word in, that you hid in your heart. Then you have the Holy Ghost in your heart, and them two can team together and help us. Yeah, amen. Time of prayer. Amen? amen. Sometimes people say, Well, I'm waiting on God to give me an answer. If you listen, he might have gave it to you when you were talking to him about it. Right. Amen. You know, uh, you know. And, and let me say this. <laughs> You've heard me say this before. I, I raised my voice a little bit when somebody asked me to lead in prayer. But And, and I'm not against it. I'm about to say again it, like some of them oh, country preachers said. I'm not against it. It's all right. But some people pray like they preach it. Yeah. I mean, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they're hacking when they pray. <laughs> I think you're talking to God. I mean, when, what if I went over Brother Mark and said, Hey, Brother Mark, how you doing today? I want to say I love you, and I appreciate you, and I love you, and I love your wife, and I love your family. Hey. I think sometimes God looks down at us and says, What is he doing? I like how Brother Charles says, he lifts his voice up when I call on him to lead in prayer. Right. I didn't, and I probably spit all over Brother Mark. <laughs> <laughs> he probably needed a bath, didn't he? He's but, you know, we're talking to God. What was, I mean, I believe the Lord sometimes looked down at us and said, what's he hollering at me for? <laughs> right. <laughs> People, I mean, you know, there's so much unscriptural stuff done in church is just pitiful. Yeah. Now, I know I'm guilty of some stuff, too. But I'm just pointing out everybody else's stuff. I'm not pointing my stuff out. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Well, we need to take time just to... Some of my... I think some of my best praying... Now, I don't want you... I'm not trying to be irreverent. I think it's good for you to... I, I, you know, I tried this. You know, I've heard people having rock piles. You know? Pine thickets. You, 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 Come on now, say amen. <laughs> y'all think I'm going to preach too long. Y'all say amen. I probably will. You remember when uh, it was, we hadn't been here about a year and a half, two years, we cut the woods off over there. We, we, the guy come in, he promised us all this kind of money, and he didn't give us hardly squat. He ripped us off. But anyway, there they was a stump over there, Miss Gail. I'd get on my four-wheeler. I found me a great big old stump. And uh, I, I'd get on my four-wheeler and carry him. I'd ride over there to the stump. And I did it for about two or three weeks. Hey, Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. You kneel down in some fire ants, and that gets you away from a stone. 
I said, well, wait a minute. Now, I can just kneel down in my kitchen or my living room or my bedroom, and I won't put my knee in no fire ants, I believe. You get your knee in fire ants, you don't feel like praying. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's right. <laughs> if I get my knee in some fire ants, y'all going to be praying for me. <laughs> Lord, forgive our preacher for what he has said. <laughs> listen, I'm going to tell you something. Now, listen to me. But you need to talk to the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Talk to him just like you would your spouse when you're trying to love on him. Huh? Jamie, when, when you see that dress that you want, Fans to buy for you. <laughs> As they say in Tennessee, you scrooch up close to him. You scrooch. You don't scooch. You scrooch. You scrooch up close to him. And you start whispering in your ear, you know how much I love you. I am so glad I'm married to you. You don't believe all that bull, do you, man? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. That's what we need to do. Though. That kind of prayer will get you a whole lot further. Then like want to go, you know, <laughs> hollering all up in God's face, you know. I mean, I've heard them before at these meetings that we went to. I mean, they was, I mean, they was preaching. I mean, they was actually, I mean, I, I mean, had the hat going and everything, swinging their arms all over the place. And I mean, I, I, I believe God honors their prayers. Don't get me wrong, but you ain't got to do all that to get in touch with Him. I went to a church. We went to. I don't even know if anybody's here that went that time. We went down to a church. Um, in South Carolina. Uh, we are an old time preacher. I've heard so many things about him. He wrote books and stuff. And he's an old mountain preacher. Got over here praying. I've told this story before. And, 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 and everybody in the whole sanctuary heard him. My kids was there. I don't know if Nathan remembers it or not. That guy hollered out, called out to God, God, I'm a sinner. I want you to save me. I've lived a wicked life. I want you to save me. Everybody in the whole sanctuary heard him praying. I know if I heard him, I know the Lord heard him. He didn't have to make no noise for the Lord to hear him. And he went to get up. The preacher's patting him on the back. The pastor, the evangelist said, no, y'all get back down there. He ain't prayed through yet. Wow. He went to get up again. They said, no, he ain't prayed through yet. I said, that's amazing. I didn't know that he had to approve, get got man's approval to get saved right, right. or whether he touched heaven or not. How did that preacher? <laughs> well, I, I, I was fighting mad when I left that church. That's just ridiculous. That ain't in the Bible nowhere. Where in the world they get foolishness from? A man ain't going to determine whether you go to right. heaven or not. Right. Right. Are you hearing me? And he will not determine on whether you get through to heaven or not. A man of God can tell you if you got sin in your life, God's not going to listen to you until you make it right. That's right. But you need, to, you need to season yourself with supplication. And pray for everybody. Amen. <laughs> now you might, ones you don't like, you may want to holler at God for, but you know, about them. You better be careful hollering at God. Number six, share yourself with sinners. You know that's what Jesus did. That's what Paul did. Paul went everywhere and said, man, I was on the road. And all of a sudden, a light came on. Y'all yeah. remember when y'all was on the road to hell? Oh, yeah. And the light came on. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. We ought to go around telling everybody that. That's right, In Acts chapter 26, he went down there and told King Agrippa. He said, King of Griffin, he said, let me say, he said, I, he said, I, I, I'm just telling you, he said, uh, uh, I was going down the road. Oh, he said at midday, old king, that's what he said. Verse 12. He said, now light children, he said that, and I heard a voice. It's hard for thee to kick against the prince. Yeah. You know what the Holy Ghost was telling you, the same thing, oh, you ain't going to make it without me. You're right, preacher. You need to turn your heart over to the Lord. You're going to die and go to hell. It's pretty much the same thing the Holy Ghost was telling Paul. Oh, yeah. You know what he did? He shared himself. He shared himself with sinners. And, and, and he got down there to the end, and, and he told him, he said, Now, King, you know, I know you know. 
that I'm telling the truth. King Agrippa said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Uh, before he said that to King Agrippa, oh, Festus, you know, Festus Hagen. Y'all need to smile. Festus there in chapter 26 of Acts, yeah. he spoke up and said, you're crazy. He said, much learning hath doth make thee mad. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm going to tell you something tonight. Listen, we need to you need to share. You need to, listen, you get an opportunity to share yourself. With a sinner, you need to do that. That's right. Amen. Amen. Last of all, tonight, we, and this is the number one. This was number one. I saved it for last. It ought to be number one because if you don't do it, you're not going to do the rest of them. Number one, you need to submit yourself to the Savior. That's true. I, I, you know, if you're not submitted to God, you, you're not going to. You're not going to do these other things. I'm just telling. you. James 4 and verse 7 said, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil. Amen? And he will flee from you. I believe that. Those seven points right there, if we do those things, will make us, along with 2 Peter chapter number 1, verses 5 through 10, it will make us a complete Christian. Amen. Now we're complete in Him far as uh, they ain't nothing else we got to get done to get to heaven. But there's a lot that's got to get done to us to get some other people to heaven. Yeah. Amen. Because they need to see Jesus. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Let's everyone stand.